Top of 25 today. Tomorrow morning, a possible shower or two expected, a top of 22. A late shower and 25 for Saturday. A possible early shower and 20 on Sunday. Then partly cloudy Monday and a possible shower Tuesday with temperatures in the mid to low 20s. More news as it happens on 5AA. Peter Godfrey on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. It is seven minutes past five now, still on 17 degrees. Again, another one of those nights where we haven't really moved too much. Let's see what it's like across the ditch in New Zealand. Selwyn Manning joining us, editor of EveningReport.nz. How are you, Selwyn? How's your side of the ditch? Yeah, very good, Peter. Uh, There was an overnight low of about uh, 13 degrees and we're hitting for about 20, so it's holding on to those respectable kind of temperatures from a New Zealand point of view. Okay. And uh, a quick, quick look at those you know, breaking headlines and um, the New Zealand, around the traps in New Zealand anyway, New Zealand Herald has an elderly man has his benefit cut after being on the benefit for 29 years and apparently um, it uh, justified that, the government justified that by saying his residency requirements didn't stack up. But there's an interesting story further down, um, you've got to go down a wee bit from, on its website and there's this black, fat black cat called Monty and apparently he walked 240 kilometres to his old home after his owners um, moved him off to new digs. Yeah. <laughs> it's an, it's he didn't want to go, so we went back. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, kid, the black, fat black cat went home to his uh, old place, must have liked the mice that were there, perhaps. And on Fairfax's Stuff News um, that website, it's uh, a thing here about it's leading with true love, Peter, and it's a note from the grave where a husband had passed away, but his son found a hidden note written in marker pen uh, on the underside of a workbench that he'd made for his wife a few years prior to that. Oh, wow. And uh, so that's leading there. And then also a big news that's um, hit New Zealand just in the last hour or so is um, it's been found a Panama firm, you know, that has um, been in that um, Panama paper scandal, Panama papers, yeah. mm. um, had um, manoeuvred and purchased a large block of very prestigious New Zealand rural farmland. So that's actually uh, starting to get a little bit of discussion going and putting pressure on the government for an inquiry, a, a proper inquiry into what effect this has had on mm. New Zealand. Okay. Um, but getting, and then what we're going to talk about, Peter, is um, where the politics is shaping up, I think, aren't we? Where, yes, poli- so the polling, Roy Morgan poll, the latest one, shows that um, uh, the Nationals are seeing a bit of a slide in popularity, um, yeah. but uh, Labor's not necessarily picking up the difference. Yeah, there's an interesting thing here that what's shaping up is the opposition parties. Labor's still got the largest slice, mm. um, but people are turning off national, but they are going to New Zealand first. The uh, nationalistic centrist party that's led by that institution of New Zealand politics, Winston Peters, mm. seems he's been around for oh, since the 70s, um, but still going really strong. And uh, this trend from um, has been set uh, where national is starting to bleed support Labor is bleeding support too, has been established over a number of polls that polled um, around about once a month, uh, Roy Morgan here, and uh, it's coming from January 1st. There was a noted dip in uh, the John Key-led National Party um, compared to where it was. Um, uh, it looks like it's the lowest that it's polled since pr- around May 2014. So okay. You know, uh, but it's uh, indicative, obviously, we've got another year to go before elections. Elections are around November, expected to be November next year, September through to November next year. So mm. we way to go, but those trends are showing. What it seems to be down to that uh, really um, the New Zealand first under Winston Peters, um, the public seems to be picking up that he's actually one of the most experienced politicians um, he's had you know, public sport wrapped around him, uh, usually from the older sector of the voting New Zealand public or those, or and I say or those, um, who are intolerant to uh, the immigration gates being open mm, too mm. much compared from their point of view. And Winston Peters has often capitalised on that particular thing. But in recent times, he has made a move on representing the interests of the rural and farming bloc in New Zealand from a conservative centrist point of view, and that has really come about. It's like you know, some some people say politics is a science, don't they? And yeah, yeah. it's almost like there's a vacuum of representation there because the nationals that are in government, uh, they tend to um, go shy of speaking 
out against their own government, if you know what I mean, when things are going awry for the rural sector. So no one's kind of sticking up for the farmers, no one's sticking up for the rural sectors or the support industry around those in those provincial areas of New Zealand. And um, Winston Peters has jumped in and has started to um, talk about that and his popularity and respectability um, broadening his party out is... Um, has, has come uh, stronger and stronger according to this poll, Peter. Okay, so what, here's back. So the, 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 he founded the, uh, the, uh, the 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 party, the um, New Zealand yeah. First. Before that, because he was in government, as you said, a long time. Was he with the Nationals or an independent or yeah. what? He was a yes, national. he was with the Nationals. Um, he was the cabinet minister in the Nationals, um, and he, a, a extremely well respected one. Actually, going right back to mm. Sir Robert Muldoon um, mm. when he was. Prime Minister in New Zealand. Some say it was a dictatorship under Muldoon. Um, and new, um, Winston Peters was a new MP at that stage, and Muldoon predicted at that time that this man will be New Zealand's first Maori Prime Minister. Okay. Now he he, he almost got there, uh, but he fell out with uh, the Nationals uh, in the early nineties when they came into government. He didn't agree with some significant policies of neoliberalism um, that were um, coming through under the Nationals at that time. Remember us saying that Winston Peters, he advocates a more centrist, moderate yeah, approach yeah. to economic um, governance. Now, w- w- what happened there is he, he left uh, the Nationals while they were in government and he set up New Zealand first. And it, it has been around as an institution, that, that party, ever since. In 1996, he then joined with the Nationals um, to form a coalition government in 1996. Now, his involvement in that and leading that coal- uh, the, the coalition partner, New Zealand First, uh, and Deputy Prime Minister and Treasurer he was in that period, it lasted two years before he had had enough and says, no, I'm off, I'm pulling out of here. And that government limped on for another year and a bit um, and was voted out and Helen Clark's government came in. But then in 2005, Peter, and um, Helen Clark's government um, did a coalition agreement of sorts with New Zealand First, and Winston Peters was made Minister of Foreign Affairs and did extremely well and mm. surprised mm. a lot of people, actually, uh, as he had been, um, you know, talked down by a lot of politicians over the years. But he, he actually brokered... A, a rapprochement, if you like, between New Zealand and the United States when Condoleezza Rice was the uh, Secretary of State over there, and those two in particular got on very well. Um, since then, um, he has, like I was saying earlier, he has manoeuvred, he, and he won the by-election in Northland, which was a key election for National. That was last year. Um, Winston Peters beat the Nationals by a long way and started to represent rural New Zealand. Now, the only problem there is is the party is perhaps too small to have the infrastructure to cover the whole of New Zealand's rural belt. Yeah, uh, yeah. But the anticipation and expectations are that, you know, that rural um, voter is actually wanting um, someone to speak out when uh, they need some advocacy there. Now, if you compare, this is the fascinating part, if you look at this, Labour. We haven't even mentioned Labour in this, and this poll is kind of suggesting that Labour is just not on the radar. Those people that are leaving John Key's National Party no longer want to support that for all sorts of reasons, probably um, uh, just getting tired of him, you know, to thinking, well, he's too flippant in different Mm, areas. mm. This ponytail pulling thing that went on a couple of years ago, you know, very weird. Um, And it kind of catches up with some of these politicians after, I've got to say, still miles ahead, but Labour is way down in the doldrums and around 26% kind of hovers around that, mm, um, mm. where Nationals are up around the, uh, the 40, 42% kind of sits there on most polls. With, with, with Labour, if you're looking at the leader, Andrew Little, um, his, his background, when you put it against Winston Peters, uh, Andrew Little led the EPMU union, that engineering union, uh, printers union, uh, mm, etc. Okay, yeah. um, he's never been in a political governance role. Um, he's a party list MP, meaning that he um, he, has in, he has campaigned and, and can, tried to win electorate seats, but he's lost every time. Yeah, um, yeah. So you've got a party leader that has never won an electorate seat. Right. Um, and there's been a few big blunders on the foreign exchange and banking issues of late that I think have had an effect on his credibility. In other areas, he's very strong. But when you stack that up like that, Winston Peters looks the stronger candidate to be a Prime Minister or a contender, and there are some that are starting to say, well, you know, if the numbers go away, this tide continues to go out on national, and New Zealand First is placed in the kingmaker role again, right in the centre. 
would he go with the Nationals and perhaps pick up a, you know, a cabinet post? Or would he say to Labour, look, I'll get you guys back around the cabinet table, but the cost will be I'll be Prime Minister <laughs> and, and push Labour out of that chance. Now, that would go down like a very bad New Zealand wine, Peter. I'm glad you said that me. With, with yeah. the sh- as they call them over here, the Labour Chardonnay Socialists. Right, yes. But, yes. but uh, it, it, remember, there is precedence around that kind of thing happening. There is, um, yeah. Up in the Nordic countries, um, uh, where you've got the smaller, moderate party mm. actually coming through and having the Prime Minister. Uh, so it's an interesting little turn of events. Indeed. Would Na- New Zealand go for that kind of thing? Or we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see, indeed. So we we'll have to have a quick break, but we've got plenty more to hear about uh, across your side of the ditch. We'll be right back with you in a moment. Uh, okay, Sarah Manning, editor of EveningReport.nz, is with us. It is 17 minutes past five. Five AA breakfast. I wonder, Anthony Albanese, where you sit with regard to the announcement yesterday, because some of the media in, in New South Wales and other places in the country have been less than kind about such a large contract being awarded to South Australia. It's been characterised as a form of charity. Well, the, the Telegraph have gone to rack and ruin since you left, David. <laughs> uh, that, that, that's very clear. Five double eight breakfast weekday mornings from six on thirteen ninety five Adelaide's five double A. Escape the everyday with Escape Travel. South America is truly a feast for the senses: sights, sounds, and salsa. Find out everything you need to know at our free information seminar on South and Central America on the fourth of May. Our special guest Marion Bunnick is the founder of Bunnick Tours. Come along and learn about small group tours to South and Central America, including Cuba. Register now at Escape. EscapeTravel.com.au. Your amazing South American holiday starts here with Escape Travel, the home of interest-free holidays. Time for another top deal from Nordic Honda, top of Glen Osmond Road. For this month only, you can receive an amazing deal from Nordic Honda on any new Honda vehicle. Purchase any new Honda vehicle and receive three years scheduled service free. Top that, three years scheduled service free, exclusive to Nordic Honda. Ask the team about five year extended warranties on all new Hondas and drive away today. Another top, top deal from the top of Glen Osmond Road. Nordic Honda. Nordic Honda. Get the garden you want at Garden Grove. With everything from the ground up. Plants and instant lawn, mulches, soils and bark, landscape and building materials, hardware, pavers and more. There's a playground for the kids while you enjoy coffee or lunch in the cafe. Garden Grove. Golden Grove Road, Golden Grove. Open seven days. Phone 8251 1111 for delivery to your area. Garden Grove. The garden that I want. Mum's the one at Chemist Warehouse. Save with big brand vitamins at amazing low prices. Like Austral and Vitamin D 300 Capsule Bulk Pack, only $27.99. Or Nature's Own Triple Strength Garlic Sea and Horseradish 200s, just $24.99. Give Mum a healthy Mother's Day with big brand vitamins at amazing prices. Always read the label use only as directed. If symptoms persist, see your healthcare professional. Chemist Warehouse, lowest prices, guaranteed. My name is Susan. I didn't grow up in an iPad era. I didn't even know how to turn it on. ACH Group listened to me. They helped me from the beginning. At ACH Group, we listen. Because your needs and interests are different, the solution is too. Claire, she runs the iPad class. So I look at Facebook. I sold a lot of things on eBay. It just opens up a new world. ACH Group. Good lives for older people. Phone 1300 22477. A day in the life of a foster care family is much the same as a regular family. There is one major difference, however. As a foster carer, you get endless support 24-7 from Life Without Barriers. They even offer a unique living arts program involving musicians and artists with one-on-one mentoring for your foster child. It's all about healing, loving, well-being and living a rich, fulfilling life. Life packed with possibilities. Contact Life Without Barriers to learn more. Visit lwb.org.au. Peter Godfrey, Talking Adelaide on 1395 5AA. And we'll take a look across the ditch in New Zealand as well. So what's happening over there? So Owen Manning with us, editor of EveningReport.nz. So on next story, this one both, well, starts off a very sad story, but uh, with a... Uh, well, a, a bit of a happier ending, but it all centres around the police dog, Gaza, who... Uh, well, tell us the story about Gaza. Yeah, Gatman 
sorry, but um, yes, Gaza. He he is well renowned over here. Um, there's a police dog um, down in the Wellington area, and there's a program on television that kind of maps out the careers of police dogs and other dogs that work in that kind of security and safety kind of area, re- uh, rescue dogs, etc. Gaza became quite a quite a star, and 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 you know a lot of the public really really took to this this dog. Um, mm. He'd been a cop dog for about uh, since early. 2013. Mm. He'd been in a couple of skirmishes where, you know, doing his job out there on the beat with the, his police handler, um, where he was injured, um, wrestled around the neck, and um, you know, yeah, just basically injured in the past. Um, but he recovered and right back fully with all the zest that the police would want out of Gaza. Lived like all the police dogs do that are in um, active work with the handler's family and loved by the kids apparently and. You know the general um, public and, uh, as as well. Mm. But um, last week, Peter, there was an incident where three police officers in Gaza, the police dog, went to a home in Porirua, which is a suburb of Wellington. Uh, they had search warrants, and they what they were doing, they were looking for a man whose um, home detention bracelet had been removed. Now they entered the property, and suddenly there was a skirmish, and a gun went off. Um, the man who they were looking for um, shot Gaza, and mm. Gaza was um, fatally wounded. Um, he died shortly after with two of the police officers ripping out of the house, carrying Gaza as he was screaming. Mm. And another police officer jumped for his life from a second-story window and is still in hospital, um, although is stable. But sadly, Gaza died, and the outcry from the public was huge. Um, the armed offender, um, there was a police... Um, hunt and armed offenders call out of course uh, that went for over 17 hours right through the night into the next day and the armed offender was found dead in the house um, uh, after that and that's subject to the coroner's outcome but there's been a lot of attention as you would imagine it'd be the mm, same yeah. in, in your your patch yeah, Peter would, absolutely. You know, when something like this happens and the public are just really really have got on board with the bravery of the dogs the handlers the, the cops involved in this type of situation um, and really a, a very sad outpouring of grief relating to the passing of this dog. Now a, 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 just a, a nice touch came through from, um, it was in the New Zealand Herald yesterday and it showed that um, it, it kind of hinted at Gaz's line and his his um, you know his family lives on and it was basically saying to the New Zealand public here's a photo, it's the Gaz's little sister and she has had six pups and they're fantastic and the and they've, they've been bred down in in wellington to to all be police dogs if they make it through the training and mm. there was a huge public outpour of well that's just wonderful and it was just one of those stories that kind of stood out this week peter of um, something that was very sad but turned around into there was well you never yeah. bring old gazer back will you you know the poor old dog doing his job but um mm. there, there was something to look for the but, future uh, maybe there'll be another little gazer amongst those six pups in that litter you know yeah, no, yeah the, the photo on the new zealand herald website beautiful photo of uh, of, uh, of his sister um yeah beautiful looking dog yeah amazing yeah amazing dogs yeah so I, I had one um some years ago we called him robert robert and robert <laughs> yes and he, he came from a german import dog and, a, and another um, um german shepherd female that have been, you know, her lineage was here in New Zealand for yeah. a time and also went back to this fantastic dog that used to be around called Ross Fort Premonition. And he was uh, brought over from the UK and had um, been in Australia for a time as well and uh, and picked up championships all through those okay. three countries. But, um, you know, th- that dog, Robert, he, he would have been a fantastic police dog. And when he was very elderly, um, and I was sitting there working, actually, and uh, Robert was there, and next thing I heard, police helicopters. Uh, up above, mm. and there was this big skirmish. Just as a press statement came in from the police saying, "Run away, robber!" Um, mm. is running around the suburb where I was working, mm. and uh, this robber ran past my window. And poor old Robert, the uh, the German Shepherd, missed the whole show. But he was just too old and too sick too to be able to do it. <laughs> then, as the police got hold of this guy and took him away, yeah. um, Robert was out there tracking the scent as if he was right on the beat. <laughs> he was back. Boy. He was back there when he was uh, thinking he was younger again. Oh, wonderful yeah. story, so what? All right, mate. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Have yourself a great week, and uh, we will catch you again next week. Okay, Peter. All the best to you, mate. Bye-bye. So we're Manning, editor of EveningReport.nz. 26 and a half minutes past five. And Stone, next, all the latest 5AA news, sport and weather. Attention travellers. Would passengers consider...
considering taking a break now or sometime in the future, please move to gate 5AA. And that's where you'll meet the king of travel, Phil Hoffman. At 8.30 every Tuesday night with me, Alan Hickey, Phil gives us the best advice on where to go for that holiday of a lifetime, when to go and, of course, how to get there. So whether you're planning your trip by plane, ship, rail or road, Phil Hoffman's Travel Talk is where you need to check in. That's 8.30 every Tuesday evening with me, Alan Hickey, on 1395 Adelaide's 5AA. Hello. National Tiles has been saving professional tilers up to $8,000 per year 